noisy. Anybody ever been surrounded by a bunch of noise? I sense in my spirit this morning that what God is desiring to do in the lives of men and women is simply this, is to bring them back into a place where they truly experience the freedom that he calls forth for every man, woman, and boy, or girl that will call on his name. How many knows that he that the Son sets free really is free indeed? It means we don't have to live a life of bondage or separation from the things of God, the promises of God. But we can walk in a place where his peace and his rest and his strength is something that's very real. That there is an anointing that we have with him and through him that is a very tangible thing. And it's a precious thing to see young men, young women, as you're seeing and witnessing this morning, calling out to the things of God. Today, we find ourselves in a very real battle, a very real struggle across the globe. But can I tell you this morning, God is still bigger. He's still more powerful. He's still more than able to do exceeding above what any of us could ever ask or think this morning. The question today is, will we allow him to be God in our life? Will we allow him to be our source and our strength? I'm thankful for his presence this morning. Can we just lift our hands all over this house just for a moment and let's just thank him for his presence this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you this morning that you are ever present in our lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can come and to your house and we can call on you knowing this, that you are not far off, but that you are near. And this morning, I thank you for the prompting of the Holy Spirit that's pricking the hearts of men and women, young and old alike, across this sanctuary to simply let them know that you are truly all we need. So today, Father, we, we lean on you. We put our trust in you. We call out to you and only you asking you to lead us and guide us, asking you to ever so softly speak into our spirits today in such a manner that we're able to move beyond the noise. We can move beyond the lies of the enemy and know this, that we are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony this morning. We love you this morning. And the church says, amen and amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise, and you may be seated this morning. I want to take just a couple of moments as the younger ones, and if you want to go to class, you feel free to do so this morning. If you would like to stay in the sanctuary, you're welcome to do that as well. I won't keep you long this morning. But I do want to take just a few moments and I want to, while we're in an atmosphere such as this, I, I want to speak into your life this morning in a manner, hopefully, where you will walk from here in a state of encouragement, in a manner of where you know that your best days are not behind you, but that they are in front of you this morning. I want to give you a verse this morning, if the Lord would help me just for a few moments. I'm going to simply minister on the title or the topic of moving beyond the noise. And I'm going to do my best, if the Lord would help me to make you not be last in line at the local restaurant, all right? But if you are, you'll just have to suffer a little bit, okay? You'll, you'll be okay. 
But in Psalms 55, verse number 22, Psalms 55, verse number 22, the word of the Lord is found, and it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Allow me to read that again, please, this morning. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee, and he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. The simple definition for the word cast simply means to throw off or to throw away, to part with, are to shed from. Today we are only able to accomplish this if we put into motion Psalms 37 and verse number 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Because of the simple fact this morning that we are imperfect human beings struggling with imperfect circumstances we often find ourselves in a state of worry even though this morning we can testify that we are born again believers that we are recipients of salvation and even though we say that we have the promises of God's love and his protection we still find ourselves fretting over the inevitable frustrations of life from time to time. If that is not true concerning you, please see me afterwards. I want to know what you do because I want to live in your world. But sometimes life just gets to us. Sometimes we just feel overwhelmed. But Jesus, knowing the frailty of humanity, spoke these words for all to hear. In Matthew chapter number 6, 25 through 34, it says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toll not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Allow me to say this morning, we must realize that there truly is a place that we can take all of our worries, all of our troubles, all of our fears, all of our doubts, our weaknesses, our sorrow, and even our disappointments. And it isn't Dr. Phil. It isn't anyone else you might want to mention in this earthly realm. But there is still one by the name of Jesus. Not only can we take all things to him, 
But what is so amazing is that we can leave them there and move beyond the noise that they try to bring into our lives. Allow me to remind you this morning that there is none like him. He is still the lily in the valley. He is still the bright and morning star. And he is still the rose of Sharon. But beyond that, he is still my God. My deliverer. He is still my strength, my source. He is still my protection. He is still my provider. And he's still saying in Matthew chapter 11, 26 through 28, to every one of you and I this morning, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke up on you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We find these instructions given to us who believe in him. In 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse 6 through 11, it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. Why would we do that? It's because it says, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, settles you, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Billy Graham once said this, God is bigger than your problems. Whatever worries press upon you today, put them in God's hand and leave them there. That's pretty good advice. Barbara Johnson, she had this to say, worry is a senseless process of cluttering up tomorrow's opportunities with leftover problems from today. I kind of like that one too. But probably one of my favorites comes from Corey Tin Boon, who says, we are not called to be burden bearers but cross bearers and light bearers, we must cast our burdens on the Lord. A gentleman by the name of George Muller says this, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. Can I ask you the question this morning, in the midst of all of the noise of your life, who are you really trusting? Where are you really focusing? Who are you really counting on this morning to meet you right where you are? Do you have the revelation that the psalmist David had concerning Christ Jesus. I know I pulled this from the funeral parlor just recently, but I'm going to pull it from the funeral parlor one more time this morning. Is that all right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen, you don't need a preacher to preach you a message. If you just get the revelation of Psalms 23 like David did, he said, listen, I know what it is to be in the field in the morning. I know what it is to be in the field in the evening. I know what it is to be in the field when there's the noise of a lion and the growl of a bear. I know what it is to be on a, in a place where there's a Goliath, uh, but I also know what it is to be in the hands uh, or under the hand of an almighty God that is able uh, to sustain me and to protect me and to lead me and to guide me and to direct me. Listen, uh, you and I today, we're going to have to make a decision. Uh, are we going to uh, continue to live in a place where it's just a bunch of noise, uh, a place of confusion, uh, a place where there's no joy and no peace and no rest? Uh, or are we going to come back to a place and say, God, uh, I'm casting my burdens upon you uh, because your word says uh, you shall sustain me. Uh, and oh, by the way, your word says is, uh, you will never, ever, ever suffer the righteous to be moved. Uh, can I tell you there's a whole lot of noise telling you uh, that you're not going to make it, uh, that it's all over, that your family's never going to change, uh, the situation's always been. But listen, uh, I'm going to resurrect an old song, I shall not be moved. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, it's because when I am in him uh, and he is in me, uh, there is nothing uh, that is able to move me uh, because uh, he is forever established the world would like to do away with him. Uh, they'd like to discount him. Uh, but can I tell you today, we are in a place uh, where God is saying to his people, if you'll just cast your burden upon me, uh, I will still sustain you. Uh, and by the way, I will never leave you and I will never allow you to be moved. Uh, meaning this, I will not let the enemy bring destruction uh, because uh, you are covered uh, by by the blood of Jesus this morning. Uh, I can tell you, uh, you and I still have a reason to celebrate. Uh, we still have a reason to rejoice uh, because we are still the children of the Most High God uh, and He still has a heart that is extended towards us. Uh, His love has not changed. Uh, His strength has not weakened. Uh, but this morning, no matter where you find yourself, uh, there's a place of serenity. Uh, there's a place of peace uh, that can be had uh, if somebody will just trust in Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. David understood but I believe that in our culture today we find ourselves much like the disciples after the death of Christ. When you look at the story of Christ upon this earth and we're getting ready to go into the Easter season. But we find that after the first day of the week, very early in the morning, after Jesus is resurrected, we find that in the evening of that same day in John chapter 20, that all of the disciples are there except for Thomas. And they are there because of fear of what the Jews might do to them. They have just witnessed what happened. A very noisy time. Now fear is gripping their hearts. And all of a sudden in the midst of all of the anxieties and in the midst of all of the noise, it says that Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and he says to them in verse 19 of John chapter 20 peace be unto you and when he had so said he showed unto them his hands and his side and then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord but then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Notice with me, fear had shut them in. There was no sound of worship in the room like there was just a week prior. Nobody was waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna at this time. It was quite the opposite. All kinds of unknowns, all kinds of uncertainties. They had allowed the unknowns to steal the joy that they had just possessed. But when Jesus stepped in, we can celebrate this morning because of the words that he spoke. He simply said, peace be unto you. What is peace exactly this morning? It is simply freedom of the mind from annoyance, annoyances and distractions and anxieties. It is tranquility. It is serenity. It is rest. It is when we truly experience his peace, my friend, that we begin to hear the sound of the return of true, pure worship in the house of God again. We go to the house of worship week after week, month after month, year after year in recent history. And men leave the same way that they came. <laughs> Discouraged. Overwhelmed. Full of uncertainty. Not knowing if they can make it through another day, a little long, another week. Another month seems like eternity. Today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today, I believe is somebody's day to experience a complete release from the troubling that has stripped them from their joy and their peace and their rest. You may have come in here today at your wit's end not knowing how you're going to make it through this week. You may be under the sound of my voice this morning just hoping you can make it because you don't know how you're going to continue. I'm here to tell you this morning simply this. Jesus is desiring to step into all that you have because he's willing to still sustain you and he's willing to still encourage you and to deliver you. If I could say it this way this morning, I would say it back the same way that we read it in Psalms 55. It's time to cast your burden upon him and allow him to sustain you. Because he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. In Psalms chapter 1, the first three verses of that chapter, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. But notice verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Can I tell you this morning, you have a heavenly father that is desiring for you to prosper. He's desiring for you this morning to experience his joy, his peace, and his rest. Notice with me, when you begin to walk through scripture, you begin to find some amazing truths. And in this hour I believe there needs to be a declaration of these truths spoken into the house of God once again and in John chapter 14 27 the words of Christ says peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid you may be sitting here today in a state of worry, state of anxiousness, state of not knowing. 
here's one thing that I do know. He truly is a good, good father. Here's something else that I know. That no matter where you find yourself, he's there. And I know this, that when we are willing to cast our burdens upon him, he is always willing to accept them. And he will sustain us. All of us could probably walk through Psalms 23 and pick certain things out of that passage and say, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. and I can relate to this. But he's always been faithful. You see, David was writing Psalms 23 because of the simple fact that he had experienced not just God's love, but he'd experienced God's peace and rest in his life. And he was writing from a shepherd's point of view in such a manner that he's like, I know what it is to be in the field. I know what it is to deal with sheep that are sick. I know what it is to deal with all these situations, but far better than the shepherd that I ever was I know that he is my shepherd what he was saying is there's been times when I was sick he came and he healed me there was some times when I was overwhelmed and he came and he protected me there was times that I found myself where I didn't think I was going to make it but yet he was faithful can I tell you this about a shepherd a good shepherd I'm not talking about a hireling I'm talking about a good shepherd a good shepherd will get up every morning and he'll walk the field. But that same good shepherd will go out every night and walk the field as well. And he's looking not just at the sheep, but he's looking at the wood line all around to make sure there's nothing, nothing present in the vicinity. But he's also, when he's walking and he's looking and he's counting, he's always willing to leave the 99 to find the one. And I will tell you this, every one of us at some point in our life has become the sheep that is cast. Now, if you've done any studying at all about sheep, you understand that a cast sheep is one that sometimes just gets a little off-focused and off-track a little bit, and it lays down and says, I, I can't really make it much further I just got to rest and that grass looked real good where they was and I'm just going to lay here for a little bit because I, I I just can't go there but I don't have the strength I'll just lay but what happens is that old sheep will lay down and sometimes it leans over just a little too far and it becomes cast and because of its nature because of how it's created it does not have the ability to write itself back up it can be perfectly healthy nothing wrong with it but in that moment of time because of gravity that sheep that just wanted to lay over will go over just a little far and it'll lay there and it'll begin to kick its feet it'll begin to cry but it does not have the ability in itself to write itself even though it wants to be righted and therefore it is utterly dependent upon the good shepherd to be faithful to come every morning and every evening to make sure that everything is well can I tell you that if that sheep that is cast is not rioted by the shepherd even though when it laid down it was healthy it doesn't take long for disease and bacteria to enter into its body and it begins to find itself losing its strength and it becomes stricken and it becomes easy prey but then death is inevitable but because there's a shepherd because there is one that says I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you but I'll be with you always even to the end can I tell you this morning what he's simply saying to a generation in the midst of all of the noise I'm still the good shepherd 
I still have a peace. I still have a rest that's made readily available for all of those that will cast their burdens upon me. Notice in John 16, 33, and I'm going to bring this to a close. These things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Can I give you Ron's translation of that? In the world, you're going to have a whole lot of stuff that comes your way. You're going to have a whole lot of stuff that just irritates you, that drives you up the wall, so to speak. You'll have a lot of stuff. And can I say this? You even have a lot of people. I know you all are more spiritual than this, but this is Ron's. You'll have people just get on your everlasting nerve. You know, y'all don't have those issues. But. but in the midst of all the stuff, in the midst of all the anxieties, in the midst of all the worries of not knowing, I didn't come with a big message this morning other than to tell you this. He's still saying, if you'll cast your burdens upon me, that I will sustain you. And he's able to say that he's able to sustain us because of the simple fact of John 16, 33 is because he says, I have overcome the world. You know, there's times in life where things just takes the wind out of our sails, so to speak. Kind of knocks the feet right out from under us. But can I tell you, none of those things move him. None of those things are able to dethrone him. I once was lost and undone without God or his son. But there was a day when I cast my burdens upon him cast my cares I cried out in need of a savior and he extended his hand of mercy and grace it was not in an act of judgment but it was in an act of grace and mercy and in my weakness he made me strong in my darkest of times he Remove the weight and he began to give hope in the midst of hopelessness. He took my restlessness and gave me peace that passes all understanding. Today, in the culture and the world that we live, I find that the thing that men and women of all ages and all ethnic groups, all walks of life, the one thing that they're trying to find today is peace and rest for their innermost being. They're just trying to find an authentic love. And they're out searching trying anything and everything to fill those voids just saying I just need to try to make it one more day one more week I wish I could tell the world this morning but I can only tell you because you're the only ones under the sound of my voice this morning but if you hear nothing else that I say today please hear this he really, truly loves you. He loves you so much that he gave everything 
all of the way up and beyond of giving of himself so that you and I could have life not just here but life eternal so today I know what it is to live in a noisy world I know what it is to be anxious I know what it is to feel overwhelmed I know what it is to look at the mountain in front of you and say I just don't know how I can get around it or under it or over it I just don't know but I also can testify that I know what it's like when I see him miraculously move that mountain and say don't worry about it any longer you see in our culture when it seems like everything is so readily available to us sometimes it hinders us because we try to do everything to make it happen and then we call on him last but if I could get us to reverse that this morning and say you know what let's just cast our burdens on him and let's just leave them there because he is bigger as the late Billy Graham said God is bigger I'm not making light of your situation this morning I'm not making light of your of your challenges this morning I'm not trying to belittle those and say oh that's nothing because I know that whatever it is in your life that's giving you that anxiety or that overwhelmingness that's a real deal for you that's a real issue for you what I'm saying is God's bigger than that issue he's moved that way before he's touched cancer before he's healed heart disease before he's moved on those that has battled physical conditions before he's also touched the hearts of men and women before to write a five dollar check and a five million dollar check to put in somebody's mailbox so don't think that he doesn't see those issues as well you say but preacher you don't know my family can I tell you he's used messed up families before not only has he used them he's healed them he's delivered them he set them on the path where they become families that has changed the culture that's changed generations that's brought, brought revivals and awakenings hear me today no matter how big no matter how little on this beautiful Sunday morning that he's blessed us with you have the opportunity right now to simply walk from this house lighter than what you walked in I don't have a plan like Jenny Craig or Nutrisystem or any of those other things. I got something much better. You just got to grab a hold of it and just cast it off. Just throw it away. Man, if I could just take 10 more pounds, just, wouldn't that be wonderful? Can't do that. But that thing in the spiritual realm, that thing, that noise, that voice of the enemy that says, oh, it's never going to be. You know what? By faith this morning, you can take that lie from the enemy and just take it off of you and say I'm putting that on the Lord and he's going to sustain me you know what he means he's saying this he's going to keep me from that when I have faith to trust him where I commit my way to him and I take it off of me and I just lay it there I can leave it I don't have to pick it up but I can walk from this place and know this morning that God's got it we stand all over the house this morning can I tell you this morning if you'll give it to him he'll take it and oh what a place it is to find yourself in a place of tranquility a place of serenity and a place of rest as I was preparing for our time this morning I sensed in my spirit the 
that there would be men and women here this morning not questioning your salvation not not questioning those things at all but I sensed in my spirit that the Lord just kind of really burdened me and said there's there's going to be some men and women in my house that they just need some rest you've heard me say it multiple times over the years but these altars are not a place of weakness but they truly are a place of strength and the reason for that is because I can take whatever that noise is and I can lay it down and I can leave it right here you can do it at your seat and all that I understand that you can do it driving down the road but sometimes Sometimes it's important to mark out the place and say on March the 1st, 2020, at a church on the side of the road, I walked to an altar and I can take you to that altar and I knelt down at that place right there and that's where I just cast it on the Lord and I was delivered and I was able to step into a place of freedom and release. I'm so thankful this morning that he says, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. So this morning, I don't know what you may be dealing with in your life. I don't know what you may be dealing with in your business, your job, your family, your finances, your physical being. It's not any of my business. I'm just here pointing you to a man by the name of Jesus that loves you, cares for you, that is one that sticks closer than a brother, the one that loves you so much he laid down his life for you and he says this, you can bring whatever it is and cast it upon me and I will sustain you and I will not suffer you to be moved. Meaning this, I won't let this thing that is a monster in your life right now destroy you, but I will keep you, and I will sustain you, and I will protect you. But you just have to be simply willing to come.